Hello again, Pietro here. I have a dilemma. How do I test something when I don't like wearing it? This is the Sunto 9 smartwatch. I've had this since July and I haven't worn the, I I tried wearing it a couple weeks ago and I just, yeah. I'm the man with two watches, this time three. This is the Amazfit Falcon. Some people pronounce it Amazfit. But yeah, it's the Falcon watch. More coming soon. Apple Watch 6. And then the Venue 2 Plus. And then the Aura Smart Rings. Let's talk about this. <laughs> I originally bought it because I wanted to compare it against this one right here. The Sunto Advisor. One of the first wrist top computers and boy when I got this for Christmas in the year 2000 whoa I was blown away with a watch that had a heart rate monitor altimeter could give me splits and all this information whoa now had this come out in the year 2005 amazing 2010 maybe 2015 I would have loved it but in the year 2022, not so much, not so much. And I must admit, I've been spoiled. I, I've spoiled myself with Garmin and Apple Watches and what's the other one? Polar and Fitbit. And there's just so many wearables out there that have distracted me and have kind of ruined it for Sunto. Funny enough, after I used it for about four weeks, I did start to enjoy the UI a little bit more. And by UI, I mean the user interface. Sorry, getting some... Ah, oh, there we go. That's better. I was blinding myself with too much studio lights. So here's the app. I've synchronized it with my OnePlus 9 Hasselblad. I have no idea if they have an app for the iPhone. Maybe they do. Anyway, normally, I find myself enjoying the UI on the watch more than the app, but it's opposite. I like viewing the, the data in the app much, much, much more. And I like that I can view my data online. Garmin has that, Fitbit has that, Polar has that, Apple, meh, Samsung, meh. So the fact that Sunto did that, great. They're supposedly really good with the navigation, but this one doesn't have maps. It's also a bit pesante. It's, it's, it's heavy for what it does. The battery life is good, and here, let me just go over my cons that I wrote and that I... So you're seeing the video today, the one that I should have posted back in August, but I was reviewing other gadgets. So day three with the Sunto 9. Cons. My OnePlus 9 Pro smartphone is in Do Not Disturb mode at 8.10, and yet the Sunto 9 is still awake. While it charges, keeps beeping with email alerts, the watch should be able to communicate better and know when and when not to notify. Notifications. Where's the clear all button? There isn't one. Number three, no shutdown or power off. Number four, no auto brighten. What? Yeah, there's no brightness detector. Number five, not bright enough for indoors for my eyes. So when you're using it inside with no studio lights, no office lights, it's a bit dim. Not dim-witted, dim. Number six, watch faces are good, yet they're not dual layer. So a dual layer watch face is basically, it tells the time and then it also allows you to click on it. For example, if we take this Apple Watch here, so it has the time, but I can click on certain facets of the watch and it takes it, the, the watch has layers. It's, it's really nice. Uh, Apple has done this. Garmin has done this. Samsung has done this. Amazfit even has done this, but Sunto, you need to get some layers on the watches. <laughs> There's only one alarm. So if you need to take your pills at noon and you want to remember about that meeting at 9.30, you're going to have to choose between the two.
Number eight, cannot find a way to edit my sleep time. Number nine, try to add a POI, point of interest, during a workout yesterday. Meh. No. <laughs> so if you're a navigation watch, you're this company that's been around forever, but you can't add a point of interest when you're doing the workout? Yeah, that's lame. So number 10, cannot edit sleep. Number 11, the vibration motor on this watch is a bit weak. It's, it's really weak. I'll show you that in a minute. Number 12, cannot exit workout mode. So kind of like Fitbit used to be and many other watches, when you're in the workout mode, you're in the workout mode and you are stuck in the workout mode. There is no going anywhere. And I'll be honest, that's lame. Number 13, there's no nap detection. I really love naps. I feel that as a parent or just a human, <laughs> that opportunity to take a nap every couple days, so awesome. And I like to log that on my wearable. Well, speaking of alarms, that's my alarm to start doing this video. Number 14, no flights of stairs. Hi, that's lame. It does measure altitude. And when I compare this to altitude measurements of this more expensive Garmin Phoenix, right on par. Good job. Good job, Sunto. But you don't now do stairs. Number 15, the way it sits on my wrist. So look at this one. See how it just, it looks nice, I think. You know, just kind of even. All right. So now we'll take that off, put on the Sunto 9. I'm trying really hard to keep everything in frame these days. I've made that mistake on far too many vids. There we go. So it's just the way it looks, it, eh, it's not my favorite, I'm sorry. And maybe that's just me. You might think it looks great, but the way it sits and then like that bevel thing right there and then the the whole shape is off. Number 16, not a true circle. This one really bothers me. A huge uh, shout out to this nice company, Hemset, that sent me these cool watch bands for my Phoenix. And this is the Phoenix 7X. So there he is, rugged. See how nice kind of symmetrical the watch is. See how the watch face is completely circular? They they cut off the bottom. Why why would you do that? Why would you cut off the bottom like that? Why? So now we'll try the heart rate. This is one thing that is really bothering me. Number 17, not for a lefty. You can't switch this around. And why do they have to plaster the logo like that? Why does any watch manufacturer feel they need to plaster the logo on the... I know that it's a Sunto. Are you advertising on my valuable wrist space? Okay, it thinks my heart rate's 90. I know I'm kind of well agitated there, but I'm not that agitated. Okay, 87, 88, 90. I guess they were right. Hmm. Oh, thanks for the photo, JP. 82, 87, 78. Look, look how, what's it doing? What is it doing? It's just kind of all over the place. Wait, now it's 95? 80, okay, now it's going back down. Now it's 84. Wait, it was just at 95. Maybe I just need to like chill for a minute. Oh, now it's up to 100. Good grief. And when you work out, it's even worse on this one too. Number 18, no badges. That's a huge no-no. So then we jump to day four, the pros. Fabulous outdoor display. It uses the whole electronic ink or whatever you want to say. So when you are outdoors with it, nothing like a field trip to the outdoors. Hey puppy. You want to go? You want to go outside and do some testing with me? What do you think? Feeling up to it? Maybe later. Sorry, I woke you up. You're a good dog. Yeah, you're a good dog. 
Are you our favorite GSP? Okay, we might be getting some wind noise here, but look how visible that is outdoors. I mean, it's perfect. Even in direct sunlight, looks so, so good. Oh, we're a naked tree. It's freezing. Speaking of freezing, let's go back inside. It makes a fun little sound when you charge it, when you get it. There we go. Nice little sound. But see, right now I have the backlight on and it's still a little bit dim for me indoors. You be the judge of that. We'll zoom in. See, it's not that, it's just not that bright. When you compare it to other watches with the same kind of technology. Number three, quickly grabs a GPS signal. Number four, the HR sensors appear accurate. They're just inconsistent. And that's how loud the alarm is. So you can snooze it. And if you listen really carefully, you'll hear the vibration. Not much. Kevin really hear it. Sleep data is helpful. Number six, great workout details on the watch. Number seven, recovery time. Very nice. Number eight, do not do not disturb or DND mode functions swimmingly after during the sleep area. Number nine, display turns off when not on person. So if I just leave this here, the screen will turn off to save battery life. So we'll just come up, turn. And sometimes the screen is wonky, but yeah. Okay, number 10, auto synchronization throughout the day. So you don't have to like tell it to synchronize, it'll just automatically talk to the app. So that's a really nice function. Number 11, fatigue score. Number 12, fitness scores. 13, 30 day summary. Number 14, I like that they give you a decent length cable. I mean, look at that. That's longer than the, the field of view of my camera. So that's about two feet and change. Very nice, very nice. And it's magnetic. I like that it's magnetic. I don't like any type of watch connector that you have to shove in the back of the watch. The downside to magnetic is you kind of have to finesse it a bit, but look how strong that is. I mean, yeah, you could charge this in the car and you'd be good to go. There we go, number 14. External and magnetic. And then we'll jump ahead. Did some testing against the Phoenix. Uh, not much during July. We did a one mile door walk. It was about the same. Cycling, it was okay. Nothing really special. Battery life was good. Over two weeks in the Sinto ecosystem. Yep, it is better than I thought as a hybrid of the Polar or Garmin ecosystems. Honestly, I was a bit bored wearing the Sunto 9 after 72 hours. It was a short honeymoon with this gadget. And then we jump ahead four months. <laughs> so now we're in November. Style, I give it a four out of 10. You know, it's just kind of, it's okay. Seven for navigation, because I don't like how the sensitivity of the watch just doesn't work. On this one, it's always working. You know, I never have to do the same gesture twice. Very, okay, that time I did, very rarely. So this one, it's a hybrid between button navigation and swiping. And it is nice that you can do a long press in certain menus, and then it takes you to that menu. Durability, I give it a seven. You know, had I been wearing this every day for the last four months, I think it would still look about the same. There might have been a few scuffs on the screen. This is not a sapphire screen. For battery life, I give it an eight. I kind of would expect a little more for something that's that thick. Functionality, I gave it an eight out of 10. Accuracy, seven, just because the HR is not what I think it should be. Consistency, you know, the heart rate and sleep, they're just okay. 
They're nothing spectacular. And that is my review of the Sunto 9. 114 days later. You might like it. I just not a fan. Not really a fan of this one either. This is the Polar Grid X. I just so this is going on eBay later today, and this is gonna go on eBay next week because I'm gonna do one more comparison between this Sunto and the Sunto Advisor. If you have any thoughts on this, comments, negative or positive, type away. Pithy comments are always welcome. Appreciate your time. Thank you so much for watching this review. And let me know your thoughts if you disagree or agree with my pros and cons. And yes, let those credits roll for the Paramount Good. If there's a watch that you want me to review that I haven't reviewed yet, type that down below. Or if you have any questions about a watch that I'm currently reviewing, let me know. And don't forget to run farther to go further in life. Goodbye. Just have to see how long the battery will last this time. It's in storage. So it's all synchronized, it's all charged up. Battery life is at 100%. So now we do a long press. Do not disturb. Yep, 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 yep. Settings. General. Oh, yeah, power saving, turn that on. And then right there, connectivity, airplane mode. So now, it's in its storage mode. And it goes. Back in the desk. Yeah. But the other watches, well, I love wearing this one. I'm just testing other gadgets right now. See you in a week or two, Sunto.